Hello YouTube, this is APC, and today I'm going to make the second particles tutorial. Today we're going to go over things that affect the particle after they're created. So, we need to create two sprites. The first one is the sprite we're going to use for our particle. Okay. We're going to call it SPR Rain and make it 8 by 4, 4 by 8. And the reason we make it so small is so that you're going to handle it better. Alright, so there's the there's our, our rain particle. And now let's create another sprite. This one's gonna be called SPR Solid. Just filled in black like you always do when you have a solid, or usually. Okay. Now let's create the solid object. We're not gonna be using that for a little while, but we'll see. Okay, now let's go into particles and I'm gonna we're gonna change on these settings. So first off, let's set the sprite. So that would be part type sprite. The first argument is part. Next is the sprite we want to use, which is SPR rain. Next is whether we want, we want to be animated or not. We only have one set of image, so that would be zero. One is animate, zero is not. And then stretch. If it had animation, stretch would we'll put stretch to false. Then I'll just repeat the animation over and over again as, as usual. But if we put stretch on, then it'll it'll stretch the animation out over the whole thing, so it only goes to the animation once, over the whole lifespan. So again, we don't have an animation, doesn't matter. And then for random, it's it's wondering whether it should start at a random submidge. Again, it doesn't matter. Okay. So now we have the sprite, we don't need to worry about shape. We don't need to worry about size because the size that we're using right now is fine. The one that we used in the sprite. I'm not worried about color because we already have it colored in the sprite. So next, I'm going to show you a few new ones. Uh, one of them is life, which is very useful, but not in this specific case. But I said last week that I'd show you, and it, it is very useful. So I'm going to tell you about it. It's part type life. The first argument is what part or particle. And then the minimum life and the maximum life. So this will make it um, last between one and two seconds. So I'm, I'm going to make that a comp because I'm not going to use it right now. Okay. We're not going to use speed either. We have a, something different for that. And that is part type gravity. That'll, that'll make it look more natural than, than, than uh, speed would. So what are you working with this part? amount of gravity is just 0.5 and what direction of gravity to go is 270. Now I'm going to modify the direction. We want it to go downwards but to add a little bit of variation I'll add 10 to the max and I'll take 10 away from the minimum. And then the next new one I want to teach you is called part type orientation. That's basically the image angle of the particle. So, first argument is part, because that's what I'm working with. The minimum angle, we're going to make the angle the same as we have it with, with the direction. So, 260, 280. And then the angle increase, don't want the angle to increase. And the angle can wiggle a little bit. So, change randomly. And the last one, angle relative. If you put down true or one for this one, then these arguments really don't matter because if you put if you put true down for angle relative, that means that it will change depending on what direction it's going, so it'll look more natural. So there's one more I want to tell you about, and that's part type alpha. This one's a little bit similar to color, that there's multiple versions of it. One if you only want one alpha, two if you want to go from one to two, and three, and there's several others. So we're just gonna go with one. First argument is part, no surprise. And I'm gonna put down 0.5. That make that'll make it semi-transparent. Okay. Now we're going to the emitter. We want to change the region because it's gonna be falling from the sky, obviously. So we want to have a full range of x values. So that would be from zero to whatever our room width is. And the y needs to be at the top of the room, so that'll be zero for both of them. All right. Instead of doing a burst, having it shoot out a lot of rain particles right in the beginning, we're going to make it a stream, so it's always sh shooting out rain particles. So, and instead of 100, because that would just 
kill our frosts or if we make it like 10. And that, then we don't need the alarm anymore. Okay, now I'll test it out, see how well our rain looks. So there's the rain, it looks pretty good. Now we're going to add a solid right here. And then we're gonna make the particles be destroyed whenever they hit it. So we'll just, just 32 by 32. And let's just create like a line of five right here, rough in the middle of them. Now we're going to program a destroyer on top of this for the particles. So we're going to know the x values that we need to cover. So down here, the x value is 224, I can see that down here. And then to the right, it's 384. So if you just write that down, and we'll write that down for y as well, that would be 192 to 224. Okay, so now that we got those down, let's create our destroyer. So we're going to just call it destroyer. Set equal to part destroyer create. And part of this SYS. Okay. Now there's only one function we're going to use for this, which is a function that sets the region of the destroyer. It's pretty simple how, how it designed just any particles that come in contact with this region will then destroy it. So what it will do part destroyer region and then the system the SYS. The destroyer working with is destroyer. The minimum X we, we wrote this down is 224. The maximum X is 384. The minimum Y is 192 and the maximum Y is 224. And then the shape. You want it to be rectangle. And basically all these things that work with particles will have the same shape constants. Okay, now let's test it out. As you can see, it works pretty well. All the rain gets destroyed once it hits our destroyer area. Now uh, we're going to change it to deflector. Deflectors don't really work very well in this situation. Like, you would never see rain bounce off something. Or at least not in the way this will make it. So this is really only for theory rather than make it look nicer. So. Deflectors work very similar to destroyers, so I'm just going to replace er everything that says destroyer, replace it with deflector. See? At the exact same region, at the exact same function, part deflector region, only the shape is always a rectangle, so it doesn't matter. And then we got to add one more function, which is part deflector kind. Say which system, what thing that we're talking about, deflector, and what kind. There are two kinds, horizontal and vertical. The difference is, is with the vertical one, things that bounce against it will bounce away vertically, and with horizontal, things that bounce away will bounce horizontally. So in our case, it will work best if they bounce away vertically. So do PS deflect vertical. Now there's one more thing. Sorry. Part deflector friction. This indicates how much speed will be lost every time something bounces against it. So SYS deflector. And I just put down a number. I'm going to put down five. This way it bounces off with a different amount of speed. So like I said earlier, this wouldn't really work in, in this situation, but you can see that the rain is bouncing off our deflector thing and, and then come back down and it bounces up less each time. So now there's one more thing we, we got going to talk about. I'll take away this solid because we don't no longer need it. And this last thing is what we're going to call an attractor. So I'll just take this deflector part away and we're going to call it attract and make equal to part attractor create and make part of SYS. So now we gotta set where we want the tractor to be. So part attractor position. This will take care of where the particles will be attracted to what point. Kind of important. So first one SYS, then attract, it's really repetitive. 
So we want, we're gonna put it exactly in the center of the room, so that'll be room width divided by two, and for y, it'll be room height divided by two. And then next one is force. So part attractor force. So that's attract. Now what force do we want? So I'm just put down a five, which pretty medium force. We'll make it come towards it with that much force. And then the distance or rate radius, I'm gonna put it two five six. Now one thing I gotta understand is if this like force, let's say six, really high sixteen or so, but this was ten, you wouldn't notice it very much because only the particles that come within ten pixels of this thing will be pulled towards it. So it's it's important to understand the difference between these two because it can be difficult to do it can be easy to get mixed up. So it's, that's two five six and this one's five for now. So that, this will um, affect most of the room, like if like this now. So for the kind argument, this means what kind of force, how is force going to work? There are three different arguments, constant, linear, or quadratic, I think. So the difference is that with constant, the force is going gonna, gonna to pull it towards the, our attractor with equal force no matter how far away it is. With linear, at 256 distance, the force will be zero, and then it will linearly increase until we get to extremely close, and that'll be five. Force. And then there's quadratic, which gives it a geometric growth rather than a constant growth. So we're going to just make it constant because that's just easy to work with. Additive is do we want the particles to increase in speed as they get closer, or not? So I'm just going to put down false because that makes, makes it easier to work with. So now we've got our tractor set up. Let's see how it affects our, our rain particles. So as you can see, it's pulled towards the center a little bit more. And um, now I can show you another thing. If I make this value negative, it'll actually be the opposite of a tractor. It was a little bit misnomer because tractors can also be can also push things away. So I put down a negative number. As you can see, it's it's pushing pushing it away more. You can see the particles gathering up along the edge of the region of our tractor, and that's how tractors work. So now you you understand deflectors, destroyers, and tractors and emitters, which basically everything that. Um, Controls particles. Once done, I have one more, one more particles tutorial to do after this, which is sort of like polishing. I'm just going to show you a few little tricks you can use. But right, right now, you know most stuff. There is no particles. It's really not too bad. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you managed to learn something. And we'll see you guys next time.